In the African tradition, I would ask humbly from an elder for permission to speak. You're not an elder. <laughs> You're younger than me. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'd like to thank everyone for being here, the dignitaries, and the regular people like me. We have a pretty big problem. You would think Rihanna was here, right? Well, maybe she is. The last time I was here, your head of state was Queen Elizabeth. So I was thinking, I'm not get, trying to get Rihanna in any trouble. I speak for myself. But uh, she had one song, right? She said, don't tell me you're sorry when you're not, Queen Elizabeth. Prince Charles, you're only sorry you got caught. So you put on quite a show. Very entertaining. Now it's time to go. Curtains are going. It's over now. Time to take a bow. Sisters and brothers, I'm proud to be back in the Republic of Barbados. Last year, I was here. And one of the newspapers asked me about Drax's estate. And I gave them my opinion that the government should take it over. Now, this estate has been in that family since six, the 1650s, all right? Estimated 30,000 people died in a 200-year period. And this man is a member of the House of Lords. And the article came out when I was back in New York, and I got some feedback from it. Well, you know, I expected the uh, European people to be against it, obviously. And then I saw some people who looked like me. And one guy was dressed up in a nice suit, nice tight. And he said, he doesn't understand international finance. Well, first of all, you don't know me. but. Let's assume I didn't understand international finance. I didn't go to London School of Economics, Warden School of Business in Pennsylvania, Harvard or Yale. Those institutions, Oxford and Cambridge, this is the reason those institutions exist. Those institutions exist to provide leadership for England, for the United States. That's why they exist. I'm not telling anybody not to go to a higher institution. In fact, if you get a scholarship, go. But understand your purpose of going. In 2001, there was an international conference, the World Conference Against Racism in Durban, South Africa. George Bush II is in the White House. Colin Powell is Secretary of State. Colin Powell looks like you. Colin Powell's parents were from Jamaica. He grew up in the Bronx. Scheduled to attend to represent the United States. You place reparations on the agenda. Barbados spearheaded it. Powell said, I'm not going. You went to Durban. I believe it was Tony Blair was running Britain at the time. He sent his delegation. The delegation, the head of it, the spokespeople looked like you. And they opposed what you were doing. You know, we are an African people. We like fables. We like allegory. We like stories, right? A Nancy and Esau. So perhaps I can take the liberty and 
make one up too. Bear with me for a minute. There's a town. Let's call this town Catsville. Catsville. And some cats live in this town. There's some dogs in the town also. The dogs do not like the cats. Have you ever seen a dog kill a cat? Raise your hand. The dog grabs the cat by the neck and drives all the life out of the cat. You hear me, George Floyd? Look. The dog said, you, you cats are a mess. We don't like you. Do the menial task. Nature is funny. Nature is balanced. In nature, you have the big animals, rhinoceroses and elephants, lions and tigers. Those animals are strong, but nature has a balance. The smaller animals, and those animals are fast. So that's the balance. So, when the dogs attacked the cat, the cats ran up the tree. The dogs are strong, but the dogs can't climb. So, one night, one old, wise old dog stopped them and said, don't kill that cat, bring that cat to me. He said, you sure? Yeah, bring that cat to me. I have a plan, I'll have my plan ready in a year and a half. So he took the little kitty cat home. And he fed the cat. And instead of giving the cat meal mix, he gave him a bow wow chow. And the cat learned to bark like a dog. He said, cat, you ain't going to cat university. You're going to Balwell College, all right? You will learn dog culture. And the cat started to identify with the dogs. And he said, one final thing, your name ain't kitty cat no more. I'm going to call you Tom. Not Tom Cat, Tom. Then, a year and a half later, the cat had grown strong from the Farina dog chow. Mine changed from the university system. You don't understand international finance. Oh, wise old dog said, it's a year and a half, you're ready. This is the final solution to the problem. These cats are multiplying. They're out of control. So the appointed time they decide to attack all of the cats in the town. Some cats heard about it and ran up the trees. The old wise old dog said, oh yeah? Tom, go and get them. And Tom had grown strong and had been fed. And Tom went up the tree and brought them down. And they started to kill the cats. They brought one cat down the tree. And one cat said, why are you killing me? You need to kill those ghetto cats over there. I'm a university cat. The dogs looked at him and said, you fool, we killing cats. All cats. One cat said, I'm not, I'm not even from here. I got an accent. I'm a different kind of cat. He said, you fool, we killing cats. And they kill all the cats. 
and Tom had done his purpose, his duty, and everybody said, hail Tom, the hero. Then I looked around, there were more cats left. And ladies and gentlemen, what did they do to Tom? What did they do to Tom? They killed Tom, because Tom had outlived his usefulness. I didn't study international finance, whoever you were, but you understand that the knowledge you attain from these institutions, you can put towards the betterment of your people. Your reflex knowledge is to identify with your enemy. That's what those institutions do to you, unless you think outside the box. Why can't you be like Moses? For those of you in the Kemetic, the Kemet faith, don't take this literal. You can't take the Bible literal people. A lot of those are metaphors and stories for you to live your life by. Understand what I'm saying. So I'm not saying the Israelites or Isra whatever you want to call them were better than the Egyptians. We need to understand the stories we are told. Moses came from an oppressed group. Moses ate Pharaoh's food. Moses studied Pharaoh's books. Moses applied the knowledge to the advancement and liberation of his people. Why can't you be like Moses? Today is August 24th. United UNESCO in 1997 designated August 23rd, yesterday, the International Day for the Remembrance of the Slave Trade. August 23rd, 1791 was in the Haitians, the slaves in Haiti, took over the country and free themselves, free themselves. I don't want to go into a whole lot of details about the Haitian Revolution. In fact, today, I'm not even going to speak so much about slavery. You know the story. Somehow, you only hear about the forces of bad and voodoo because the European wanted that way, okay? You, it, it, a religion cannot survive thousands of years if it's all about bad. It's against nature. You hear the bad stuff because he didn't understand it, the European, so he tried to get you to hate yourself. It started a voodoo ceremony on August 14th, and Bookman prophesied the slave insurrection. Cecile Fatiman, a voodoo priest, priestess, presided over the ceremony. We don't hear about her for some reason, well we know the reason. Black women are gi given no credit. Black women are the lowest of the low in this world. One tier below the black man. Everybody else is above. So, they free themselves. You heard of Toussaint Louverture and John Jack Desaline designating Haiti in 1804. Independent black nation. France didn't recognize it. In 1825, the French sent an armada and blockaded Haiti. Said, look, we lost our possession in Haiti. You got to pay. No, for centuries, France had started coffee and sugar, all that from Haiti, free. You got to pay. And they charged the Haitian people 90 million francs. 90 million francs is worth $20 billion in today's currency. So Haiti agreed to pay, and they didn't really have the money. That's why Haiti is the poorest nation in this hemisphere. By 1900, 90% of the Haitian budget was going towards France. And France said, 
I know you don't have the money. Check this out. It's how crazy this is. So I will loan you some money to pay me. And they kept paying to 1947. 1947. You see, when the Haitians took over, the Haitians were alone. They were isolated. Most of this region were colonies. Brother, if I ask you to strike me with your finger, what do you think the effect would, would be? You strike me with your finger. Is it your only one? If I tell you to strike me with your fist, you can knock me out. You weren't able to help Haiti at that time, but you have an obligation to do it today. This is our slavery, so don't urinate on me and call it rain. They free themselves, but got caught up in a debt they couldn't pay. Aristide got overthrown twice. Aristide asked the French to pay back the money. Now you understand why Aristide got overthrown. Closer to home. I know you want to talk about Barbados, right? They said you came here in 1627. Now when I was young, they used to say the, the English settlers came at Jamestown, 1627. They were all white. But somehow, since I became more mature now, they added 10 slaves to it. So now you had 10 slaves coming with them, right? In 1627. Now, Time to free the slaves, emancipation. With Britain and its colonies, you can all you you can all you you can call all the colonies because you know I'm sure all of them play cricket. Look, eight hundred thousand ex-slaves to be freed. The Slave Abolition Act of 1833 implemented 1834. The so-called planters kept going back to the legislator asking for money. I said so-called planters. I can't call them planters. Drax never planted a thing in his life. You Rules so you get to set the language. You must speak into existence language of liberation. Drax was not a planter. Drax was a slave owner. That's what he was. You know who the planters were. So in the budget, they decide we're going to give you 20 million pounds to free the slaves, they say. The slave owners received 20 million pounds in 1834. So let's do the math. 20 million pounds in 1834 is worth approximately $20 billion in United States currency. So how much is that in Barbadian currency? 40 billion, right? 40% of the, the British budget. They took the money and they gave it to them. Drax and Cessus got paid. Got paid. Then they turned around and said, we know you pay you, but guess what? You can keep the plantations. You can keep the plantation. Plantations been in hand since the, eight, the 1650s. And the people who did the work, what did they get? They got nothing. They said, 
Effective August 1st, 1838, we will set some of you free. Originally, if you're a house slave, we have something called apprenticeship. You will provide free labor, the same like you've been doing right now, free labor for four years. And if you're a field slave, you have to provide it for six years. So the house slaves are supposed to be so-called freed August 1st, 1838. And guess what? Down in Trinidad, the next day, a group of field slaves were angry. You freed them, what about us? And they had to send in the militia to put it down. And they said, you know what? Let's just end this thing all together. 1838. Now you're free. We call it emancipation. So what are you going to do now you're free? Here in the, the, the Codrington Plantation, I'm, I'm saying some names that you some plantation people you probably understand. Codrington Plantation. One of the ex-slaves said, I got a family of four. They said, well, the wage is 30 cents a day. 30 cents a day. He said, but uh, it's hard to break all habits. Uh, Massa, my kid and my wife get sick. You provided the... Uh, Doctor. Well, you know, a slave was an investment, so they had a, you get sick, they get you a, doc, a doctor. They said, well, you, you're no longer a slave, so we can't get you a doctor. So out of that 30 cents, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to survive of that 30 cents a day. Jamaica is different because Jamaica, y'all been to Jamaica? It's got mountains and forests and stuff. They ran off, started peasantry. And Jamaicans know how to live better than anybody. I was in Jamaica, the brother was telling me, you got no money, you can go on the ground and get this stuff up and cook. Where do you think you got that knowledge from? Centuries. Not so in Barbados. You're trapped on the plantation. You got mountains. Of, you, what do you got? You better work. 30 cents a day. So, if you're lucky, you can hop something and try to get out of the island. Eventually, some left. Americans opened up Cuba for plantations, Honduras. And then, beginning <coughs> 1900s, early, the French tried to cut across the Isthmus of Panama and merge the Pacific with the Atlantic. And they feel, the workers feel they know what they're doing. Roosevelt said, I took the canal. Let me do it. <coughs> but who's going to survive those mosquito swamps? Oh, we got a group of people. The ones who come out of slavery. So, contract Jamaica and Barbados. You can come earn some wages. I understand why you went. 20,000 of you off to Panama. We got some tricks. Look, one day I, uh, I dress and put on my hat and stuff in, in New York. I went into the office, and it was an older African-American male, and he said to me, you look like Panama Jack. So I'm like, oh, Panama, okay, I kind of vaguely remember something. I asked another, another younger brother, I said, you know who Panama Jack was? He said, he don't know. All right? So they wanted people to come to Panama. So guess what? They paid a few black people some money, going down here, go to the plantations, Dress them up like Panama Jack, 
all slick and stuff. You go on the plantation, you see, where you been? I've been to Panama, I've been making money. You need to get off this plantation and come. Sounds good. They go to Panama, they're building a the canal. American Southerners are controlling it. The white workers paid in gold. The black ones in silver. Segregation, can't use the same restroom. Now, that's some jungle in Panama. You got a dynamite and blast. Guess who's gonna do the blasting? Huh? Yeah, we got some blasting to do. You go ahead and do it. Some of us lost their arms, their legs, something that make it back. This is after your so-called emancipation. What's the letter in the alphabet? Don't do that and call it run. Look, 100 years after emancipation, people somehow, 100th anniversary, that's a big thing. You remember that one. People remember. 30 cents a day didn't change. Inflation, everything. Down here in Barbados, this man came in from Trinidad. They have a bust of him over there. He's organizing. So his name is Clement Payne. And he's a troublemaker. So they grabbed him up. Now his parents are from Trinidad. He had done some schooling in Barbados. All right? They rounded him up. So you came in here and lied. You're from Trinidad. Now let me ask you all something. Does Clement Payne sound like a Trini? His name is Rodriguez or you know, something like that. If Clement Payne's mother and father had got together on Pelican Island, right off the Barbados, they would have sent him there. They just wanted to get rid of him. So the masses of people got mad, and they started what the mighty Gabby called riots in the land. They weren't riots, these are rebellions. Going after people who had cheated them. Many, the official count says 16, 22 people lost their lives, all right? It's not just the people who died right away. You had to go check the people who got wounded and went to the hospital. One, they call a hawker. So those of you outside of Barbados, I explain what that is. That's somebody who sells stuff and they can balance a tray on their head. I see one of my cousins is here. I was talking to him the other day. He said, your grandmother could balance that tray. Shot her down dead. Look, this is after emancipation. You ask for reparations. Oh, it's too remote, it's too far gone. The people who went through slavery are no longer alive. That's what they say. That's what they say. Who's going to claim it? Has nothing to do with you. Any, any of you ever lived in Great Britain? Have you ever worked in Great Britain, my brother? Nobody here has never worked in Great Britain? You worked in Great Britain, right? Did you work before 2015? She said yes, the sister said yes. Interesting. You asked for reparations, it's too remote. This is back in the 1800s. She worked in Great Britain, and your ancestors obviously enslaved Africans, right? Interesting. You took that 20 million pounds in 1838. You gave it to Drax and his people. 
up front, Britain. But then you borrowed the money. You had to pay it off in installments. <coughs> you finished paying it off in 2015. So your taxpayers' money went towards paying it off, the money that had given to Drax and his people. Don't urinate on me and call it rain. In essence, we've been here from 1627 to 1838, right? So-called emancipation. I'm not going to rustle your brain. I'll tell you how long that was. That's 211 years of chattel slavery. Chattel means you got no, no rights. You're you owned by somebody else. They'll tell you what to do, right? And then from 1838, you still got no rights. We call that quasi-slavery. So you went 1838 to 1966, right? You remember what happened in 1966 here, right? So you got independence. So how, how long was that? That's 128 years of quasi-slavery. Quasi Add them up. That's 339 years of slavery, quasi-slavery, oppression, colon colonialism. From 1966 to 2022, how many years is that? That's 56 years, all right? How do you compare 339 years to 56 years? I'm glad you're still here. Listen, all the trauma, psychological slavery, you can't wipe it out. Not in 56 years. Don't urinate at me and call it rain. So sisters and brothers, I was on TV the other morning, and the interviewer asked me, but you know they're saying, get out of my face. You want reparations? We're not doing a damn thing. Well, we made some progress. What did Beyonce say? You must not know about me. Listen. You are the people's strength are made of, the black man of this world. Read the history, Carthage, Hannibal crossing the Alps, occupying Rome, the Moors occupying Europe for 700 years. That's in your blood, driven by the flow of history. Gerald Buss is standing up in 1816, fighting for freedom. This struggle will go on. Brother Frederick Douglass said, black man, if there's no struggle, there can be no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom, yet deprecate agitation of men who want crops with a plow on the ground, they want the ocean with the offer over its waters. A struggle must be a moral one or a physical one, but it must be a struggle. Power can seize nothing without a demand that never has and it never will. We may not get all that we pray for in this world, but we must surely pay for all that we get. We will win this, black man. Understand what I'm saying to you, black woman. You came from the blood of warriors. Queen Nzinga of Angola fighting the Portuguese to protect her people from being placed in the Atlantic Slave passage, that's what we're made of. Nanny Griggs advising Bussa in 1816. So see, Fatima, I told you about before, the Haitian Revolution. 30 to 40 percent of the fighters in the Haitian Revolution were women. And I looked at the flow of history, and I explained in the book. And I've studied men, I've studied women, and nobody comes out as strong as this person I'm about to mention. Nobody comes out as strong. Right there in Maryland, Sister Harriet Tubman, <clears throat> escaping from freedom. Going into Pennsylvania, Harriet said, I'm going back. 
Well, I'm just kidding for freedom. I'm going to tell you all the truth. I ain't going back. You have to beat me to get me to go back. I heard I'm going back. Got to free some more of my people. She went back. She got back. Harriet, what's, what's going on? Chill. Now I'm going back again. One night, up ahead, there was danger. One of the <coughs> people she was bringing escaped. <coughs> Slave stopped. He said, I need to go back to the plantation. Harriet cocked the gun to his head. He said, dead, Negroes tell no tale, move your butt along. She went back 19 times, freed 300 of people. That's who we are made of. You think this is a fight? You didn't go through slavery. Listen, France went on for Martinique, fought for Algeria, independence. You can look them up. France, Fanon said, every generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission and then decide whether to fulfill it or betray it. This generation's fight is reparations, young people. And I'll leave you with this sister, black woman out of Mississippi. She died like around 1973, so it's not that long ago. Activist in the 50s and the 60s, Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou Hamer was sterilized against her wishes, beaten in the head. Y'all know anything about Mississippi? <laughs> That's the place you all want to go. Strong sister. She said, we must never forget where we come from. And we must always praise the bridges that have carried us over. So I'm not perturbed. I'm actually optimistic. We will win this fight. We will win this fight for reparation. So in the end, sisters and brothers, I thank you for coming out. You need to understand that we are an African people robbed of our names, our language, our culture, our values, our manhood, our womanhood, and the way some of us act, even of our minds. But we shall rise, never to fall again. Marcus Garvey said, up oh, you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. Thank you so much. <laughs>